Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, football fans of all ages, this is not Marciano Stadium. This is not BC High. This is the Harvard University, home of the Crimson. And today, it's the BC High Eagles against the Brockton Boxers. And right off the bat, we have an interesting start. Brockton losing the toss and will receive as BC High deferred. Their kicker just took a digger on the field as he ran up to that ball. And a squib kick in good starting field position for the Boxers as they will start at the 34-yard line. Well, the Brockton box needed definitely good starts, you know, good field position right here. Tough loss versus Captain Memorial, and it doesn't get it any easier, Matt. I mean, talk about BC High, you know, ranked top 10 in the state. And I believe exactly ranked four in the state to be exact. Um, this is an absolute powerhouse, absolute powerhouse. The Brockton boxes, frankly, um, if they if they're one and three, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough coming back to a, to a decent record here. This is a big game for the Brockton box. They need a big start. Jalen Underby, Ellerby Cundiff on the jet sweep, trying to turn the corner on the outside. He does. He's got some room to run, and he picks up about six yards after taking an initial hit behind the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you what, um, you know, got good yardage right there. If he actually didn't hesitate, he probably would have broke it. Uh, had a lot of green in front of him. I'll tell you what, is this not cool or what? I mean, we're in Harvard today. Harvard. The Harvard the University. The Harvard University today. I got, I got some speaking smart talk now. I'm talking about radiuses and, and circumferences and, 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 and nucleuses and atoms and so forth. I'll, I'll sneak that in there at some point. DC High is the home team in this matchup. They're wearing their home black jerseys with maroon pants, gold helmets. The boxers, they're visiting white jerseys, maroon pants, black and white striped down the side. Jose Montero Jr. in the shotgun with trips to the near side. To rule us the man in motion, Montero Jr. back to pass, has to quickly get rid of it before taking a hit, and it falls incomplete. Nice pass rush right there by, uh, by BC High, definitely putting pressure right there. Now it's forcing a, forcing a first a, a third down, but listen, it's third and manageable, third and five. Um, you know, it, they have the ability right now to you know, do a play action, pass the football um, on this third and five. Not a third and long, so they have some options here. Like I mentioned before, uh, according to Max Press, BC High ranked number four in the state. Number one's Everett, Central Catholic, and King Philip. Only three teams ahead of them. Again, trips to the near side. Rosen Pierre, the lone man flanking Jose Montero Jr. And the give to Pierre, who is hit immediately. And he's going to be brought down for a short loss. Yeah, he lost about three yards on that one. Just no room on that one. Play to run, you know, good job by BC High, closing the gaps immediately right there, forcing a punt. So unfortunately, you know, really good field position, all for nothing. You'd like to see at least them, you know, push the football a little more to back up BC on there and when they receive the football. Uh, so, you know, it's tough to see, see Broughton now take advantage of the opportunity. Tobo back to kick a high snap, able to get a very good punt off. And taking it back for the BC High Eagles to the 35-yard line. And that is where we'll have the first look of the night at probably the scariest running back in the state. That's number 27, Danny Abraham, six foot, 205 senior. And he is already committed to this school, the Harvard University. Harvard. I'll tell you what, um, you know, just, just a powerhouse. I and mean, it's got to be a, a cool feeling for him. First of all, congratulations, first and foremost, for um, you know, for that huge accomplishment. And to play in the school that you're, you're committed to, it's gotta be a special feeling. Four receivers set, no backfield. And it's gonna be a quarterback keeper. Short gain, maybe about two yards for number 24. Will Bowen, who is Originally a tight end, now listed at quarterback after Bobby DeMeo went down with an injury. Second and eight for BC High. Another quarterback keeper for Bowen, and this time he finds a hole and charges ahead for a gain of about five. Good job right there with the offensive line pushing and getting a few extra yards for their quarterback. Following his blockers right there. So now it's the third and short. 
Tell you what, Matt, I mean, looking right now, what a view here at Harvard Stadium. It's just it's just a, a glorious, glorious old school stadium, kind of Coliseum Roman style. Um, listen, it took us forever to get to the press box, but it's definitely an impressive sight. Worth it. Worth it. Now this is number two on the direct snap. He takes a hit in the backfield, turning the corner, hurdles a man, and gets the first down. Oh, wow. And about five additional yards. That was Bobby DeMeo, the six-foot senior, able to turn nothing into something, and a first down for the Eagles. I tell you what, he got tattooed, though, at the end of that play. Had a chance to actually bring him down for a loss. Couldn't see who it was um, brushing him in the backfield, but couldn't get a handle on him. He actually got a lot of positive yards for the first down. And again, it's DeMeo in the backfield. Matt Sullivan, the injured quarterback for the Eagles. A handoff. This is Abraham trying to turn the corner, and he's brought down at the 50. A very excellent defensive stop on Abraham's first run of the night. I'll tell you what, great play right there by the brought the box. I believe that was number eight. Marquise de Santos for the Brockton Boxers, you know, running east, east to west, but the Brockton Boxers yeah, definitely, uh, you know, showing their speed and, and their athleticism, stopping them. I don't think he gained a yard on that one. Three receiver set, two to the far side. Now. A little overhand pitch to DeMeo is complete, and that should be enough for a first down for the Eagles. Great presence of mind right there. Feeling the pressure, nice little dump pass, not panicking under pressure. You know, a little Aaron Rodgers dump pass, if you will, uh, and gets the first down. Good pocket presence. First down at the 39-yard line for the Boston College High School Eagles. Two receivers set, along with two tight ends. And Abraham, he's behind Will Bowen. The give to Abraham. He finds a hole, and he's off to the races. And he gets around a man to the 10, the 5, to the end zone. That's a touchdown for the Eagles. Abraham, I mean, definitely showing the Harvard fans a little preview of what they're going to get next year. Great job on the offensive line. And he just exploded through the hole right there and turned into a whole another shift to the end zone. Danny Abraham with a 39-yard touchdown run. The extra kick is up and good. So seven to nothing, Eagles over the boxers with 6.59 left to go in the first quarter. Newby. Brockton's defense started off strong in that drive. They stopped Abraham on his first run. Where did it go wrong for the boxers? I tell you what. I mean, listen, you gotta give credit. You know, where credit's due right there. Um, you know, as Shannon Sharp would say, you know, the tongue don't lie to the teeth, and the teeth don't lie to the tongue. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, he, that was talent overcoming talent right there. Uh, that was just him following his blocks, him following his big offensive lineman, and him just going to a whole other level. What brought the box need to do right here is they got to take advantage offensively. I think if they want to win this game, this game might be a shootout. And, 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 and you know, Aaron Montero needs to really establish offensively uh, a good tone for the Brockton boxes. And they got to put some points on the board. They got to do it quickly. We continue to see the weird set for the boxers' special teams. Three men back to receive. Number 97 kicking off for the Eagles he is not listed on our roster. Bouncing uh -oh. in, bobbled at the 24 yard line and taken up to the 33 by number 23, Shannon Thomas. A little trouble right there. I mean, just definitely dodge a bullet. Didn't get a good handle on that kickoff. And uh, almost a disaster for the Brockton Boxers. So here we go. Listen, it's so early, six minutes left in the first quarter. Brockton Boxers need to get a good drive right now. Defense! 
four receivers sent, two split to each side. Montero Jr. in the shotgun, flanked by Pierre. The quarterback keeper and hit immediately is Jose Montero Jr. He's going to go absolutely nowhere at the 30-yard line, and that's a loss of two. I should have brought the box really, uh I, I think uh, the quarterback, you know, has, has the ability to really throw the football and throw it very well. We've seen it last few games. Had a really good game uh, two weeks ago versus versus uh, Blake on the team. At where were we two weeks ago? Two weeks ago, let's see. It was Catholic Memorial and then home against Weymouth. Not Weymouth. The team before that, Lexington. Lexington. There you go. I mean, I dynamite game over there. Um, you know, so he has the ability to really throw the football. Montero Jr. is going to airmail this one wide to the right, intended for number 13, Martin Paul Carpio. And that'll bring up a third and long for the boxers. BCA Sports making a couple of trips north of Boston. Yeah, no, Jeez Louise. Hey, listen, I'm a, I'm a Lynn Tech guy. I'm a Linner. So, uh, easy trip for me, 20 minutes down uh, to Harvard. Harvard. I made my way around the uh, radius, or as you uh, low lights call it, the rotary. <laughs> <laughs> Four receivers set for the boxes. Montero Jr. again in the shotgun. He drops back to pass, looking long over the middle. He's got his man. It's Carpio. Oh! And falling incomplete, a step and a half behind it. Boy, all that toast, but no jelly. Right there, right there, tip of his hands. Uh, just, nothing just, but green in front of him. Nothing but green. That was six points right there. Just a little too much mustard on that football. You tell him, hungry? Toast, jelly, mustard. Toast, jelly, mustard, yet? Yeah. Because don't give me a hot dog. <laughs> this Brockton gets in punting formation. High snap again, and... A high end over end kick falling at the 40. Takes a good Brockton bounce and out of bounds at the 34 yard line. And that's where we'll have the second look of the night at the BC High Eagles offense. Great to see the Brockton Boxer Band doing an amazing job here representing Brockton here at Harvard. The BCA sports crew traveled the circumference of the north of Boston. I'll call them boroughs. Right, right. We have to go right to Somerville, the, Cambridge. We have to go right into the nucleus of the right, city. Right into the nucleus of Somerville, yes. Union Square. Yep. And, uh, There's a little spot called Wings Over. Check them out. Check them out. We definitely uh, digested the food into our uh, d digestive system. <laughs> <laughs> Bowen long over the middle. It's going to be picked off. Oh, wow, what a horrible decision right there. Throwing it to Number triple coverage. Eight, Marquis Dos Santos making the Ivy League play. You cannot do that right there. Throwing to triple coverage. Um, you know, it's not a very Harvard move by that's Bowen. Not, that's not a Harvard not, move not, right there. Not an Ivy League move. But uh, I, I tell you what, that's what brought the knee. Good job by the Broughton Boxes stepping up right now and creating a, tover, a, a turnover. You know, they got to take the football and create things, and, and they definitely did. Um, so brought the boss to come right back, have an opportunity here on the 35-yard line to make some hay. So first and ten for the boxers, the 36-yard line, four receivers set. And in the shotgun again is Jose Montero Jr. Quick screen pass complete to Jalen Ellery Cundiff across the 40 to the 45, trying to turn the corner. Ripped down by his collar and no flags for a horse collar. You know, we're talking about Ivy League schools. I mean, like Brock in the last couple of years have had a few Ivy Leaguers themselves, so I definitely want to give a shout to them. Uh, not Harvard, but we had a few that have gone to Brown uh, last last two years. But it's Just one of Harvard's main rivals. Yeah, so, uh, you know, Brock and uh, <laughs> listen, we're right there. We're right there in terms of setting our best to use Ivy League schools. Four receiver set. Montero Jr. looking for the screen and now sending it complete to Mitchell. And he's going to be brought down at the 25-yard line. i tell you what, Matt, good look off right there. Just that look off and that pump fake made the defensive back hesitate just a half a second 
for him to get some room to, to throw the football and for a completion right there. Great move by Montero. Great pump fake. Great pass. Great time. Great football. Here we go. And the lights are on in Harvard. The lights are on. We've got, just as a side note, we've got possibly the best view of the Boston skyline oh. right here. Oh, my God. It's awesome. It's absolutely amazing. So a 35-yard pass complete to Paul Mitchell, and now a play-action run. Rosen Pierre is still turning the legs, has a gain of about one. Now you see a look at the Boston skyline and the lights on at Harvard. Oh, man, what great great camera work by, uh, by the postman, always delivering. This is amazing. Right come here. up, guys. you got to appreciate the postman. He came up now twice north of Boston to deliver to the viewers of Brockton. That, uh, just, I mean, this guy is just an absolute just, you know, 20 points, 10 rebounds every game. Just brings brings down the house. It's Isaiah Thomas in the fourth quarter. I mean, this guy is just all money. LRB Cundiff goes to the far side, and it's going to be a pitch out to Rosen Pierre. Rosen Pierre to the 16-yard line, and he's going to be close to the first down, depending on the spot. Looks like he'll be half a yard shy. When it gets to the red zone right here, this one gets a little tight because you're not working with much space right now, so you got to be a little more creative with your play call. Tip the brought the boxes do if they stick to the running game or do a play action. Third and nine right here. I'm sorry, third and one. Third and one. For the boxers, four receiver set. Montero Jr. under center for the first time this game. Quarterback keeper. He's got a first down and more all the way to the 10-yard line, and it'll be first and goal for the boxers. Got to hang on to that football right there. A little loose with the football. Very fortunate it didn't pop out. Timeout called by BC High. Though this is a home game for BC High, I do think Brockton is number one has traveled very well coming to this game, not to mention our band and our cheerleaders. So it's a home game for BC High technically, but I think Brockton has, I'd say, probably more fans here in today's game. And definitely with the band making a lot more noise. And so it is a first and goal. On the 10 for the Boxers, 3.36 to go in the first quarter. Trailing the Eagles 7 to nothing. Seeing a couple of big plays, one to Jalen Ellerby Cundiff and one to Paul Mitchell to set the Boxers up. A big third down run there by Jose Montero huge, Jr. Huge, huge. Hey, I have a question. Is Harvard like one of the richest schools in terms of the country, in terms of resources? It's got to be. It's got to be. Okay. It's, it's got to be. Okay. How come there's not a guard on elevated to the press box? You know, this is the oldest university in America. Can we get an elevator here for crying out loud? Jeez Louise. We Maybe after this play. Trips to the far side. Montero Jr. is going to run out and faking the pitch, charging ahead and brought down at the five-yard line. Here's Montero Jr. Second and goal from the five. So there's, there's certain rules that go with elevators. If they were to make any renovations to the stadium, the law mandates they have to put in an elevator at a cost of about $100,000 to build a shaft and get electricity and all that mumbo-jumbo. Right. I think with the tuition cost. Got to I mean, measure the, the listen, circumference, the diameter. That, that, that's, you about, know. that's about three students worth of tuition. I think they can cover it. Here's my little pet peeve. Trips to the far side. Montero Jr. hands off to Dexter Cumberlander, who's still on his feet to the three and pushed forward. He's going to be brought down at the yard and a half. We'll call it the two. And Dexter Cumberlander, a little bit slow to get up. Tell you what, they're right there. This will be huge for the brought to boxes. Tie up this football game. I'm doing a QB sneak right now, right down the paint uh, into, the, into the end zone and, 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 and punching it right now. Go right down Main Street and just do a QB sneak. I, I, I believe it's not Main Street up here. It's North Harvard Avenue. Oh, yeah. Go right down North Harvard. Trips to the near side. The give to Dexter Cumberlander. He's got a clear path to the end zone. And that's a touchdown for the boxers. Or that. That'll work, too. I'll take that. I'll tell you what fantastic job. I think the play initially was to go right down the middle. It wasn't open. Cut back to the left. 
Found an opening even bigger into the end zone. Big play for the Brockton Boxers. Big turnover right there. All started by the mistake of the interception throwing to triple coverage. Brockton Boxers take advantage of that right there. Kudos to the defense. Forcing that turnover. Now, hopefully, it'll be a tie game after this field goal. Well, snap. The kick is blocked. That's huge right there. Brockton Boxers need every point right now. And it was a, it was a, it was a, a low snap that caused that, uh, which was a little hesitation that the kicker had, which gave the defender a little, you know, a little half a second to block that punt, to the block the field goal. Fans playing, nice crowd. If you're if you're looking through the camera and through our perspective, you say, "Oh, there's not a lot of people here." They're on the other side of the stadium, so you may not be able to get a perspective of the crowd. But we have a good crowd here. I mean, I'm probably thinking Harvard probably this stadium holds easily maybe how much you think that? What forty thousand people? Oh yeah. Amphitheater style stadium seating in. Uh oh! He's taking it to the house to the 50, the 40, the 30. He's got one man to beat. The 20, the 15. He makes the cut. And he's going to be brought down at the six yard line. Number 28. Touchdown saving tackle right there by Derek Williams Jr. for the Brockton Boxers. Brendan King on the big return for the Eagles. This is such a great rivalry. I mean, do you remember that Super Bowl in 2008? Fourth and inches, boxes were driving. They had a chance I to do. win the game. I fourth do. Fourth and inches, and they pitched it back five yards. And uh, I think that was the year. I think that was Al Louis Jean's senior year. Uh, Los Angeles Stadium. Great rivalry at BC. You got great team. Uh, great, I'm sorry, great rivalry in basketball, I should say. Both teams going at it back and forth. So uh, definitely two excellent schools, excellent programs going at it. It's always fun. Two receivers split to each side. Quarterback keeper Bowen is going to walk into the end zone and a touchdown for the Eagles, the first play of the drive. Wow, good leadership right there. BC High just came right back. They took a punch. They punched right back. And they, uh, you know, that, that was two plays right there. Kickoff in this play. Um, huge. But, hey, like I said before, Matt, did I not say this is going to be a shootout? Okay, we have 20 points here. 19 points in the first quarter, and it's not even over yet. It's going to be a shootout. Both teams are going to go at it, and I think this game is going to be won by Montero's arm. Extra point is up, and good. Right 14 to 6, 151 left to go in the first quarter. Newbie, we're having fun. Oh, we're having fun. This is a, this is, this is a heavyweight boxing match. 15 rounds. They're taking a punch. We're taking a punch back. Here we go. You have two good teams. Throwing haymakers. Haymakers. Two good programs. Two prideful cities. Boston, Brockton. Come on. What could be better than this? This is amazing. Pump up the volume. Raise the roof. I'll tell you what, one of my favorite moments in this, in this uh, rivalry. Go back to that Super Bowl game. It was fourth and inches, and the boxes didn't convert. That was the same year the Brockton Boxer basketball team. That was the year of Lewis Mons went undefeated. And uh, Brockton was beating BC High pretty pretty, uh, pretty good at home. Uh, might have been a 15, 20 point lead. And then the fans started chanting in Brockton, it's all over, it's all over. The BC fans started chanting fourth and inches, fourth and inches. Probably one of the best chants going back and forth. Here and LRB Cundiff back for the boxers. This one taken by Cundiff. Cutting back and forth. He's going to be brought down at the 33 yard line. Not a bad return for Jalen LRB Cundiff. And the boxers again start just north of the 30 yard line. 
Trips to the near side, Montero Jr. flanked by Rosenpierre to his right. Back to pass, a little oh, short. Wow. It is going to fall incomplete. It was in the hands of number 13, Martin Paul Carpio. I tell you what, BCI, I think that was number six with deflection. He could have ran that back for six points right there. That was close. Wow, what? what I, I'm just, I'm just taking, I'm taking it back by the view. I'm taking it back by the view here at Harvard. I mean, I just can't get over it. I mean, how cool is this? I mean, it almost, almost makes the eight flights of stairs we suffered through to get up here. Almost. You Still see, wish there was another. You should see the picture they got on Twitter of BA, uh, brought to the athletics. I'm mean, just an amazing, amazing picture right there. Check it out, Bo Bo uh, brought to the athletics on Twitter. It's at boxer underscore sports. Of course, we are also manning the Brockton Community Access Twitter page. Oh, yeah, the best Twitter. That's the only Twitter I look at. At Brockton Channel. You want to talk to us? Hashtag BCA Sports. Talk to us about the wonderful view of the skyline. Talk about how awesome it is that we're playing at Harvard. Harvard. Or how good of a job Mike the Postman Simmons is doing. Yeah, which is the story of the night. So everyone's we'll talking about is talking to the city, talking to the town. Four receiver sets, Montero Jr. back to pass, looking long over the middle, and he's got, again, Carpio, whose name has come up more tonight than it has all season. And he's been a few steps behind the ball for most of the night. Right, I mean, Montero is definitely putting a little too much air in that football. Um, Actually, he's got to put more in under the football. To be quite frank with you, that's just put, there was a little too much mustard on it. Well, I was two or three yards ahead of the receiver. I mean, they're, they're getting the plays, and these receivers are open, and the receivers are beating these defenders. So um, the opportunities are there. Just got to be able to convert. Great punt. Long punt and calling for no return, bouncing at the 32 and touchdown at the 29 by David Belsius. So two possessions so far, two touchdowns for the BCI Eagles. Brought to Boston, got to make a stop right now. First and 10 for the Eagles at the 29-yard line. 41 seconds to go in the first quarter. Leading the Boxers by a score of 14 to 6. Low snap handled by Bowen. Screen pass complete. And tripped up still on his feet, and he's got a first down. Excellent work there. I believe that's number four on the reception. Luke Murphy, 5'9", senior. So, big possession right here for the Brockton Boxers. Got to make a stop right now because you don't want to be going down by two touchdowns here going to the second quarter. Huge. Three receivers set. A little bit of a mismatch on the near side. Give to Abraham trying to turn the corner. He's going to be shoved out of bounds for a yard loss. How many times are we going to say that today? Like Abraham lost. I mean, let's, let's, let's take that and, and just freeze frame that audio. <laughs> I think that might have been the second time it's been said all season. Two touchdowns last week. But the real disappointing story in the Catholic Conference last week, Brockton should have beat Catholic Memorial. It was... Nine to nothing, Brockton turning it on in the second half. Touchdown and a quick field goal. 10-9 boxers with four minutes left in the fourth quarter. It's Abraham now looking for a hole up the middle, and he's going to be brought down after a gain of about three yards. Yeah, we should have beat them. They are who we thought they were. We let them off the hook! We let them off the hook! 
Well, the clock showing triple zeros, and at the end of the first quarter, the score is 14 to six. The Eagles with the lead over the Boxers. Newbie, it's been a very interesting first quarter. It's been a shootout. We got ourselves a whole batch of Western shootout here in Ivory. Pew, 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 pew. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. Listen, I told you guys it's going to be an offensive shootout. Um, in, in, in this game, I think the brought to Boston really got to make a considerable effort of throwing a football in the air. And, you know, the, <laughs> the brought to Boston defense is going to be their offense and, and having long, sustained drives right now. Listen, to be quite frankly, they did a pretty good job so far in containing Abraham. You know, um, he hasn't had too many breakthroughs in terms of running the football, but huge possession right here. I mean, BC scored on their last two offensive possessions. You don't want them to score right here. You're down by three, down by two scores. Going to, uh, and, and fighting your way and calling your way back to the whole game. You want to be able to contend. This is a huge stop right here. Listen, it's only the second quarter, but these are game changers. And wow, give it up to the Brockton Boxer Band playing Michael Jackson Thriller. How many times do you see that? I'm not one to normally do this, but there is a picturesque sunset going on over the skyline. The end of the sky is pink and it kind of gradients into some dark clouds over over Harvard, over Harvard. Harvard. We'll have you know, we did park the car in Harvard Yard, right next to the track. That is very true. That's a fact. That is not fiction. Bowen, quick screen pass is going to be complete, charging up ahead for a gain of about six yards. I think it's just short of the first down. Bobby DeMeo on the reception. It's fourth and one. Yeah, they're going to punt it, and I'm shocked. They're at midfield. They're going to punt this football. Uh, watch out for a fake right here. I don't know about this one. You're at midfield. You're going to punt the fourth football. Fourth and less than one. Mm, I don't know about this one at all. Now, timeout call by BC High is I think they're going to rethink strategy. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, listen, for the Brock the Boss to say that's a good opportunity and a good stop, but I mean, it doesn't make sense right here that you're at midfield and fourth and one and you're going to punt the football. Not high school football. Heck, not in the NFL. I mean, you don't see that too often. I'm just, I'm, I'm a little bit in awe of the view we've got. You can, so we're in Cambridge right now. We can see the Sitco sign in Fenway. That is correct. You are correct, Matt. I only speak the truth. Quarterback keeper, and it's going to be close depending on the spot. It looks like Bowen's got enough for a first down. And that is good for a BC high first down. Yeah, so they really thought that right there. I'm not sure maybe they're trying to get them to jump off sides or something like that, but uh, I was perplexed by the call. Split receivers, one to each side. Low snap, bobbled by Bowen. We have a whistle and a stoppage. I believe they're going to rule Bowen put his knee on the ground. So that's a big play, a five-yard loss for the Eagles. So second and 14 to go for the Eagles. See the brought to box and bring some pressure right here. And for four man rushing. Bowen pass complete to number four is brought down at the 49 yard line, and it comes it's going to be no gainer for <laughs> number four, Luke Murphy. Right. 
I'm bringing a blitz right here from the box to box. The third and 14. Bring the pressure right here. And, and, and really force the issue. Third and 14, more likely going to be a passing down right here. I'm bringing the pressure on the quarterback. Four receivers set, third and long, third and it's about 15 yards for the Eagles. Quarterback keeper for Bowen, who turns the corner and gets flipped head over heels at the 45 yard line. And that'll bring up about a fourth and eight for the BC High Eagles. Big stop right there for the Brockton Box. That's a game changer. If boxes come out and win this game right here, we're going to go to, to this play right here and say this is where they start some momentum. Huge right there for the Brockton Box. If they can come back here and tie this game, go into the locker room, huge. Huge. Oh, they're going for it. Oh, geez, Louise. All right, here we go. Four receivers set. Bowen back to pass. Looking over the middle. He's got his man. It's number nine for the first down and more. He's brought down at the 15-yard line. Oh, wow. That one hurts. That was Carter Rice, oh, man. the freshman wide receiver. I, uh, I jumped the gun on that one. Wow, that was tough. I didn't think they were going to go for that one. Wow. Talk about game changer. Game changer right there. That was huge. I thought they had him. They are going to punt the football. But good, um, good guts and, you know, decision making by BC Eagles. I mean, high risk, high reward right there. Give to Abraham up the middle, still on his feet, twisting and turning all the way to the three-yard line before he hits the wall. He's still up. Still on his feet. I mean, you talk about power running. The Hummer running right through a glass shop. Once again, we're in Harvard, home of the 1890 National Champions. <laughs> Read the sign right there. We all remember that year. <laughs> Why even put that up? I mean, couldn't every school claim that they <laughs> were the National there. Champions in 1890? <laughs> Bone on the quarterback keeper, trying to get to the outside. He's going to fall into the end zone, and that's another touchdown. For the Eagles. How did he get through that right there? The Bronx Box looked like they had three defenders. He kind of just did a little okie doke and, and ran right through them. Now, two possession ball game. That's big. And BC now is saying, You can't stop us. So, hey, Bronx Box has got to come back. Number 94. The extra point is up and good. So 21 to 6 the score with 558 left in the second quarter. So here we go. Hey, Rock the Bosses, they need to score on this drive right here. They need points. And they need to, to make this into a... I mean, you talk, you talk about good visuals. Right there by Mike the Postman Simmons. Wow. Wow. Zooming hey. an entire town over. He covered all of Cambridge into Fenway on that one. He said, one. I'm, I'm going I'm to do it live. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Can you get the, can you get the Red Sox game too? The Red Sox are playing Red seven. Sox are playing Houston. Can you get the Sox game? Zoom in that far. They they could <laughs> they could clinch the division tonight. Actually, it could be a fun night to be in Fenway. I might be doing that tonight. Might have to head over there yeah, after, after this game wraps up. A little early start here at Harvard. Yeah. 6 p.m. kickoff. Yeah, you might get a good time. Get yeah, over there for uh, could be a very interesting night at Fenway. Yeah, you guys have to punch out 10 o'clock. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Just reminds me, I never punch back in for dinner. <laughs> 
<laughs> neither did neither did the postman. <laughs> love it, love it. All right. Oh. Running into his own man was number 23, Shannon Thomas. And the boxers again start at the 34-yard line. It's been almost a given all night. Yeah, it might be a little lucky charm. I don't know. Let's see. They can put lights in the stadium, but they can't keep an elevator. I'm not going to let that one go. I mean, did you see the size of these lights? They, they might be from 1890. <laughs> <laughs> we, not, we may not be all going back. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you disrespect Harvard? I'm a lord. You are, I'm a lord. You are a peasant. <laughs> Sorry, Brockton, Brockton has been dominating Brown, and that's a spear to Jalen Ellerby Cundiff. WWE style from number four, Luke Murphy. We have a full timeout called by Brockton. And with that, we have to touch on one of the culture topics. Of course, we're on Twitter, at Brockton Channel. First and foremost, follow us. The Boston Globe tweeting out that Fox Sports is not planning on airing the national anthem during the Patriots-Panthers broadcast on Sunday. Well, I mean, I was surprised in every year they had them. I mean, they, they had, the, last, the first time they did it really was last week. I mean, you got to think it's, it's, a, you know, it's a business decision, too. I mean, you, you play the anthem, now you're losing commercial time. I mean, I think they, it's about the bottom line. I'm not surprised. I mean, do I you mean, agree? Do you disagree? I mean, personally, as a fan, I would like to see it. But I, I agree that it is a business, and they're losing money by, you know, I used to really enjoy it, even in the NBA Finals. They used to do the starting lineups. So I thought it was really cool. Emmy Files, they cover the starting lineups. They don't even do that no more because, you know, they're losing commercial time. So now, do you see that as Fox Sports trying to undercut the protests that these players are trying to get their point across? You know what's funny? Everyone talks about Fox and being... Bumble! Balls out! Yeah, I think Fox has recovered it. You know, everyone talks about Fox and, and it being so conservative and, and this, this, that, and the other. The irony is Fox Sports is actually very progressive and very liberal. I mean, you want to talk about FS1 and Shannon Sharp and Cowherd and, you know, it's like, I, I mean, you know, so in terms of that, Fox Sports is pretty cutting edge in terms of letting people speak their mind. I, I, I simply think they covered it last week and said, you know, we lost some money and we're not going to do it again this week. You know, it, to, it, they could, after they come back from the anthem, they could show footage. I was saying this is what happened. I mean, you could definitely do that. You know, this is what happened in the National Anthem. You know, so-and-so was kneeling or what have you. Montero Jr. back to pass. He's going to end up keeping it and getting tripped up and not able to get back to the original line of scrimmage. So it'll be a fourth and we'll call it, I don't know, 18, 19? Give or take. It's tough right there for the Broughton Boxers. That's a tough offensive possession now. They're back at about the 21-yard line, and they're going to get good field position. But, you know, one last thing about that I'll say is that, you know, we need to focus on, um, you know, the attention got to players kneeling to why they were kneeling, and I think that was lost. Good return for the Eagles, getting all the way up to the 34 of Brockton was number 18. Jacob Perez. I mean, last week in the NFL, you know, how many players are kneeling? So the, the, the message of what the original kneel was for has was, definitely been lost, right. which, which is unfortunate. I mentioned it this past week during a soccer broadcast. Kudos to the mainstream media for taking the conversation away from what the protest is about to the protest itself. Right, right. So, you know what? Definitely, uh, you know, I don't think Colin... Cowherd is the, uh, you know, the next, the next Martin Luther King by a long shot. <laughs> but, you know, I'll give him, you know, he definitely sparked the conversation. 
Bowen on the quarterback keeper, charging ahead for a gain of about eight. It'll be second and two as the Eagles again approach the boxer's end zone. Nate DeRulis on the stop for Brockton. What if uh, <laughs> Colin Kaepernick was just tying his shoe? <laughs> what if you just happened to tie his shoe? It's, that wasn't the case. Obviously. Cameras caught it. That wasn't. The we case. saw that today. One of the boxers I thought was nailing. He was tying his shoe during the anthem. Bowen screen pass complete. I believe that's DeMeo on the far oh, side. Boy. No gain on the play. I tell you what, when, this, when the sun goes down and you, you see the skyline, I mean, listen, I mean, if you're the part of talking about, you know, why the heck do you keep talking about the skyline? I mean, if you could really. I mean, do you see what we're looking at when we're in the press box at Marciano Stadium? We see trees. The trees, you know. We don't have trees in Boston. You know what we got? Buildings. Buildings. So we look at the buildings. Three receivers set for the Eagles along with two tight ends. It is Abraham flanking Bowen to his right quarterback keeper and hit immediately. Spinning and reaching out and he's going to have a gain of about one based on a fantastic reach. You know, one game I actually would love to attend at one point in my lifetime is the Harvard Yale game. I heard that's a great atmosphere. Uh, good battle. And then... Uh, I had a chance last summer to go to a high school football game in uh, Georgia, in um, specifically Atlanta. Oh man, I'm mean, two of the top teams in the country. That was amazing. And Casey Howie calling a timeout. High school football is very big up here. The Red Sox in Fenway Park hosts four Thanksgiving games, two on Wednesday night, two on Thursday. BC High, Severian, uh, Malden Catholic, and Catholic Memorial, the four teams involved in those. That's the Thanksgiving game? That's the Thanksgiving game wow. at Fenway Park. You talk about atmosphere. Wow. It's just one of those neat things. I mean, certain places. I mean, Harvard Stadium is one of those neat places. Harvard Stadium, Fenway Park. Um, you know, I, I To get... Some idea of what we were walking into. I Google imaged Harvard Stadium. First thought, is that the Roman Coliseum? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks, it looks like it, you know. I mean, I got to think it has some type of influence. It was influenced by that. I was actually fortunate to go to the Coliseum maybe about eight years ago. and It's, it's very similar. Definitely the structure is a little more solid here, though. <laughs> Concrete amphitheater-style seating. Sort of like the big house in Michigan. Right. Doesn't seat as many. Big house seats about 140,000. As Abraham turning the corner, he's got a clear path to the 20, the 15, staying in bounds to the end zone. And they're going to say he walked out of bounds at the nine yard line. Oh, yeah, I was going to say great job keeping his balance right there. But I thought he towed the line. Yeah, I thought he did too, but referees see otherwise. Good job turning the corner right there, Neil. They, he's really catching his rhythm right now. Again, you know, give the running back a few few carries, you know, two, three, four, then he broke a big one right there. He started to get a rhythm. There's a very large crowd here at oh, it's a, it's a huge crowd. Harvard Stadium. High formation for the Eagles. A pitch out to Abraham. Abraham cutting inside, working his way to the five and brought down at the... They're going to rule him down at the five-yard line. Sun almost completely set here. A little bit of a difference. Six o'clock kickoff instead of the normal seven. Of course, we've got the fantastic view of the Boston skyline and the Fenway. See the Prudential Center and the Sitco sign Sitco now all sign lit up. Nice and bright now. It's literally, if we just walked in a straight line for a few miles, we'd rock right to Fenway Bowen Park. Bowling on his third touchdown of the day. And that's a hat trick for the quarterback of the Eagles, Will Bowen. Uh, yeah, it's getting a little loose right now in terms of... Uh, the brought the box of defense. 
definitely find some spots and some holes, and, and BC's definitely uh, taking full control of this game up by three touchdowns. Knowing what BC High brings, I'm a little bit surprised it took this long. I mean, like, I thought they brought the Boston give them credit. I thought they played fantastic. A couple of big stops on defense yeah. for the boxers in the first quarter as this extra point is up and good. And that brings us to 28 to 6, 108 left to go in the first half. Well, let's back things up a little bit. Let's talk about that fourth and eight. And, uh, you know, apparently, you know, the Brought the Boxers thought they stopped them. They punted. They were going to punt the football. They did not. They went fourth and eight and, uh, and was able to get a touchdown. So, you know, that, that fourth and eight right there was huge. For BC High, game changer, game changer. It is Rosenpier and Cundiff back to receive for the boxers. So it is Will Bowen leading the Eagles with three touchdowns. The other one going to senior Danny Abraham. Little squib kick. Running right up the gut is number seven for the Boxers. Nathaniel Deroulis, senior running back. So first and ten for the boxers from the forty-two. Let's see the brought the boxers are going to. Uh, okay, I thought they would. They might have a chance taking a kneel here, but they're not. With one minute left. Ontario Jr. pass is going to be incomplete. They intended for Rosen Pierre. See the box could try maybe take a few shots here down the field and uh, put some points on the board. BC High electing to send in more speed as opposed to size. Apparently there's no lights here in the press box. It's going dark on us. We're working on it. The Mad Dog Research Team has spotted a potential solution. All right, all right, I'm waiting. Got about a minute left before halftime. The Mad Dog Research Team is going to try to shed some light on the situation. Okay, well, you better get that figured out. The new research team will get on it. Flags thrown, and I believe the boxers are going to be backed up five yards on a false start. <laughs> At this point, you're looking at a 63, 64-yard field in front of you. Yeah. Okay. I, was going, I thought you were going to talk about 63-yard field goal. I'm like, whoa, easy. It's a lot more than that. <laughs> Montero Jr. bobbling the snap, and is going to take a yard loss. So it'll be third down from the 36-yard line. I'm, I'm thinking about taking a kneel right now and just licking my wounds, heading back to halftime. And, and just, taking a knee, locking the arms? Yeah, I mean, listen, you know, it, it's third down. You know, let's see if they might take a shot toward the end zone, but you don't want to risk anything right now. You know, maybe an interception. It's, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if they're going. Looks like they're going to try to take one more shot at the end zone. Five receivers set, three to the far side. Montero Jr. in the shotgun. Receives the snap, looking long. He's going to have to get rid of it. And he takes a sack. They're brought down at the 29-yard line. See, that's tough right there. Let's say, you know, the risk of that, he gets sacks, fumbles the football, picks it up, runs it back for another six points. So that's why I would have took a kneel. But nonetheless, that's halftime. Elijah Miranda on the sack for the Eagles. BC Hyde taking a timeout. With three seconds left in the first half. 
So it'll bring up fourth and thirty. Yeah, fourth and five. Yeah, fourth 46. and forget it. <laughs> I mean, the first down marker is in Somerville. Yeah, the line of scrimmage is in Cambridge. Yeah, it's fourth and take a knee. <laughs> Brockton back to punt. This will be the last play. It's going to be a fake. Rosen Pierre on the run. He's back to the original line of scrimmage. And he's got a first down. Smart play right As there. As time expires. Don't give him a chance to run the football. You know, obviously you couldn't take a kneel on the fourth down. But uh, smart play. Smart play right there. So that'll end the first half. The score, 28-6. to six, The BC High Eagles leading York Brockton Boxers. Newbie, what did you see that you liked? What did you see that the Boxers need to improve in the second half? Well, I thought they held their own on, on, on defense, you know, for the first quarter. But, you know, BC just willed their way through in the second quarter. I mean, that fourth inning was huge. That was deflating right there. You know, you had to stop. You had a chance to get the ball back. Maybe, you know, put a few points on the board, make it a one-possession game. Completing that fourth and eight, very tough right there. Brought the boxes, hey, they get the ball back, BC high in the second half. They got to start the game like it's 0 0 and start fresh. And, and, and I'm, I'm thinking, you know, heavy doses of, of Montero throwing the football. Newbie, save for a couple of big runs, the boxes' defense has kept Danny Abraham at bay. They have, they have. You know, it's just a matter of, you know, just, um, you know, their quarterback for BC has just done an amazing job. You know, I mean, if, few long plays right there, but I think for Broxers to win this game, like I said, it's going to be a shootout. It's going to be an absolute shootout, and they're going to have to put some points on the board, and they have to do it quickly. Well, the Eagles leading the Boxers by a score of 28-6 to six at halftime. We are going to step aside and bring you second half action from Harvard right after this. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise. Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com.
Gentlemen, boys, and girls, football fans of all ages, welcome back in to the one, the only, Harvard, Harvard University. Harvard. Harvard University for second half action between the BC High Eagles and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside the seven-time award-winning director and producer and Emmy-nominated, but those are just stats and numbers. He graduated from Bridgewater State University. The U. The U. University <laughs> of Bridgewater. <laughs> Newbie Ratto, Newbie, 28 to 6 coming into the second half. What does Brockton have to do to get back on its feet? They gotta, they, they gotta start this game over 0-0 um, in the second half, and now look at the scoreboard and, and take things one play at a time. Um, they, they gotta be able to make some stops on defense and get the football back. And I'm, if I'm, if I'm Montero, you, you gotta win the game in the air. You gotta put some points on the board. I think the best way to do that is through the air. Um, to brought the boxes. Box snap, the balls up! Things like this to happen. It's oh. going to be about a 15 yard loss for the Eagles on first down. That'll bring up about a second and. Oy. I tell you what, I mean, <laughs> those are the breaks that they need. If they want to get to the game, Matt, that's what they need. They need, some, they need to force some turnovers on the defense. Defense has already done one turnover, and they're ready to score on their sole touchdown on that. But they need players like that. But and they can keep them back right here. They're going to have a good field position getting back to football. That brings up a second and 30 for the Eagles. Give to Abraham, who bounces off a defender. And 
He's going to be stick, cut back inside. I thought he was going to be run out of bounds. Uh -oh. Cutting back across the field. And uh -oh. he's still on his feet to the 15. To the 20 before he's finally brought down. That was a very long play for six yards. Yeah, he ran about 30 yards east to west. Gained about six yards, six positive yards right there. But the Brockton box, I tell you what, they, I mean, you know, in terms of Abraham, he's managed his match with his speed. They're not going to, he's not going to turn the corner and, and, and really cut one loose. Broxes have done a really good job with that. What did, what did Danny Abraham just do there? He whoop, he went whoop, then whoop, then whoop, and then whoop. Two receivers split to each side. Bone in the shotgun. Back to pass. He's going to look long towards the near sideline and just out of reach of Bobby DeMeo. Oh, wow. What a great hit right there. Couldn't quite see the number from up here in the press box, but he got really tattooed. Good pressure. Good stop right there for the Brock to box. I mean, that's just as good as getting the football. You know, even though they, they got the football back in the first half, I mean, they wasted a minute and about 30 seconds. Box to get the football right back. So you can say they start off the second half with the football in good field position right here. Matt, they had two touchdowns that I thought Montero just put a little too much mustard on it. They had the plays. They're getting uh, opportunities to score. No return and an excellent bounce for oh, BC High. Nelly. This one's still going all oh, the way down to the 14-yard line. You target, that's about an 80-yard net punt. Oh, boy. Oh boy. I mean, yeah, just off the mark, 63 yards, 17 yards short, man. Just a little bit. <laughs> just off the mark. Not quite a, the, the 63 is where it bounced. Not quite a Harvard estimation right there by you. Well, the 80 was just my hypothesis. Uh, hypothesis my hypothesis. Okay, yeah. But we, you know. The thesis, the thesis determined it was. Well, the conclusion. A 63. Yeah, the we conclusion. Call, we call that conclusion, yeah, not a thesis. Conclusion. No, no, conclusion's the public school word for it. Oh, okay. We'll call it conclusion. I fight you on this one. It's called a conclusion. Only in the university system of Massachusetts. Well, we'll let, we'll let that go. We'll let that go. Trips to the far <laughs> side. Montero Jr. on the quarterback keeper. Cutting back inside, and he's going to take a hit right to his knees. And as he does, ahead for about a three-yard gain. I don't think the Harvard press box would give us nothing but, nothing but the best water here. Pure life. Pure life water. As far as I didn't get Harvard water, Harvard brand water. Harvard. TB12 water. Distilled in their own scientific laboratory. <laughs> Triple purified as Harvard <laughs> tries to justify 40 grand per year, per head. <laughs> 40, yeah, right. Try 50 or more. Pass complete to Carpio. Those plays not going to cut it, Matt. I mean, you, you got to look downfield. And the boxes have opportunities. I mean, like I said before, they are, they had two opportunities, I thought, to score touchdowns. There's still too much muscle on the pass that they had their receivers beat. And a four receiver set. Montero Jr. looking long. He's got his man. He's got his man. It's Jalen Orby. Come to nothing but green in front of him to the 20, to the 10, the 5. And that's a touchdown, boxers. I tell you what, man, that's been there all day. Now, obviously not that wide open, okay? Paul Mitchell on the big game touchdown for the boxers. It's gonna be a 75-yard play. Yeah, obviously, a, definitely a, a, a miss, you know, a, a mix-up right there in, in the backfield. But that's been going on the whole game. Again, not to the extent of being that wide open, but the boxer receivers have been beating these quarterbacks the whole game. You know, and, and this game, like I said, is gonna be one in the air. It's gonna be one with air with um, with Montero's arm. That is in Jose Montero. Excuse me, not Aaron Montero. I'm thinking of the BC high player. That is in. 81-yard catch and run for Paul Mitchell. And uh, are you going for two here? I don't want to chase points early, but you like got to make up for that for the missed one earlier. I mean, I, I, just, I mean, you don't want to chase points early, but a field goal in high school is not as as not as a gimme as it is in the NFL. I think a two-point conversion 
it's just as much maybe a higher percentage of getting in than a field goal. Yeah. Miss field goal right there. You think of a high school football and a field goal, three things have to go right. The snap, the hold, and the kick. As opposed to a two-point conversion, you know, you need, really need you know, one thing to go right. So, I'd probably go for a two-point conversion right there. Nonetheless, they get a touchdown, they're down by two possessions. So now they are, they definitely need to go for two on the next two scores to try to for this game. So it's 7.42 left in the third quarter. It is 28 to 12. The boxers trailing by 16. Talk about explosive plays. 81 yards on the catch and run for Paul Mitchell. Now BC High's returner finding a little hole and stopped at 38. I'm gonna be frank with you, man. I'm not I don't like these squibbers. Because these squibbers it, it just allows you to have the opportunity to make mistakes. I mean when you cut the football off, a regular kickoff. You know, you run through your lanes. The second is skip, you don't know where the football is going. And, and going to different lanes and things like that create big holes for the opportunity to run back for a big kickoff return. Just not a big fan of skippers. Two receivers split to each side. We're going to have a timeout called by quarterback Will Bowen, who doesn't like what he sees. Seven thirty-five to go. Timeout for the Eagles. Our chance to start shot out the band, doing a fantastic job uh, performing. You know, we talk about the players having an opportunity. You know, the band and the cheerleaders, you know, being here is definitely a neat moment for them, too. It's a neat moment for us. I mean, for opportunity access. First time I've caught a football game in Harvard. Um, first time I've actually gone to Harvard, to be quite frank with you, in my whole life. So, um, definitely really cool. I actually went to Harvard once in college. But that was for uh, <coughs> uh, an event. <laughs> for an event. <coughs> Danny Abraham with a four-yard gain. An event where there may have been music. Yeah, some music. A little, little, little bit of music. Uh, some beverages. Those was, was, was for a Bible study. <coughs> the study group for the uh, whatever test the Crimson have to take. Abraham on another four yard gain. That'll bring up about a third and about a yard. Short So your college career was filled with Bible studies then. Bogarts? Lots, lots of... Uh, Reading lots of, the Lord's Book? Lots of Bible studies. Speaking of that, uh, happy Yom Kippur to our Jewish uh, audience and to you, Matt. And to uh, General Manager Mark Lindy. Mark uh, Lindy has a huge Jewish population. what I call holiday time. <laughs> Rosh Hashanah last week, Yom Kippur this week, Sukkot, the uh, festival of the harvest, coming up in about a week and a half. That's really the big one. They break out the fancy wine for the, <laughs> the harvest festival. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just, I mean, listen, I mean, this year is flying by. I'm just around the corner. We have three more months till the Christmas and Hanukkah. Only only three months until the Rotary Basketball Tournament. Yes, which is really one of my favorite, honestly, one of my favorite events of the year. I hope we can match up with this BC High team better than we did last year. I think so. It's a young team. 
Uh, good takedown right there by the boxers. He's had nowhere to go. He's all fired up. He's all fired up. Crowd's all fired up. Big number There's 70 all fired huge, up, ready to go. There's a huge crowd here for Brockton. That's uh, that's Roman right there, the big uh, defensive lineman. Is that a long Sounds song? like someone's got one of those Vuvuzelas. Sounds like we're at a Vikings game. Well, Bowen. Nowhere to go with it. Reaches ahead. He might be within two yards. Yeah, he might have got the first down. Depends on the spot. Depends got, on the spot. He got a real friendly spot. I think it's about a yard short, though. He's going to be about a yard shy. So it'll be fourth and one. BC High going for it here on fourth down. Three receivers and Abraham to the left of Will Bowen. Bowen's going to keep it himself, and he's going to fall forward. I believe he'll have enough, yep. depending oh, on the spot, though. No, he'll have enough. It looks like he's going to be the end some. He had to get to the 38. Good measurement here, but I think he's. I think he got it. Yeah, it's going to be enough for a first down. No measurement needed. First and ten for the Eagles for the 38-yard line. Bowen under center to give to Abraham, who finds a hole up the middle and has a gain of about four yards. Second and about eight to go for the Eagles. Three receivers, two to the far side. Then around give to DeMeo, who's spinning as a first down to the 25. Twenty-eight to go in the third quarter. 28-12 the score. The Eagles leading the boxers here at the Harvard University. Home of the Crimson. The most fearsome of all collegiate oh, mascots. Yeah. Yes. So one game I, I gotta go to if you're if you're a fan, I, I gotta go down to the swamp. See the Florida Gators play the SEC games. You know, Florida versus Florida, Florida State, uh, or, or Auburn Alabama game. I was gonna say Auburn Alabama. But I've all, I grew up as a big Florida Gator fan. I've always wanted to go to the swamp. And you know, it's funny. Um, when I was announcing in terms of you know saying this is Marciano Stadium, so I got it from. This is the swamp, the home of the University of Florida Gators. The so, universe. And then you you you, uh, you know you made it famous at the Marciano Stadium. The one Marciano Stadium. The Marciano Stadium. Of course we've got the University of Ohio. Yes. The U? I think the U swamp, of Miami. The swamp is the best name though for a stadium. That's awesome. This is the swamp. Give to Abraham and the boxers are caught on their heels on the uh -oh. going the other way and he walks into the end zone. For another Eagles touchdown, his second of the night for Danny Abraham. He's definitely feeling it right now, getting the rhythm. Uh, good drive right there. Just good job on his, his blockers and just uh, 
it's been a dominating effort so far for, for the Eagles right now. Complete domination. Another extra point attempt for the Eagles. Yeah, it's a false start on somebody. Check that might be an offsides on Brockton. The conference of officials, it is going to be a offsides, offsides against Brockton. It looks like me and the officials are on the same page here. Move up a yard, try it again. Kick is up, and the kick is good. 35-12 your score with a minute 50 seconds left to go in the third quarter. And we have a boxer down. Right on the goal line. Probably enjoying his time in the end zone here at Harvard. Number 21, it looks like. First instinct to say Malcolm Butler. It is Stanley Gianti. Speaking of Malcolm Butler, what a what a disaster of the year he's having so far. It looks like he might just be cramped up as uh, Trey Jerry's down there. So it is Gianti down on the goal line. The cheerleaders for BC High, they do not attend BC High. They attend Notre Dame Academy. All right. doing one of my favorite traditions in football. For every point on the board, they do a push-up. It's a lot of push-ups so far for the cheerleaders down there. Let's see, 7 plus 14 is 21. So if 42. they score again, they have to do 42 push-ups? Well, I'm, 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 doing the math to, I'm doing the math to see how many they've done so far. Let's see. 21 and 21 is 42. 42 plus 28 is 70. The pressure's on, Matt. You're 70 Harvard. plus 35 pressure's on, Matt. is 105. The VC High like cheerleaders that. have done 105 push-ups so far. Wow. So if BC High scores again, they will have to do 42 more, and that'll put their total yeah, they, at they, 147. They score, yeah. If they score again, they're not going to cheer anymore. <laughs> they get their, they're getting they're their work out of it tonight. That's, that's enough. Forget that's the enough. gym tomorrow morning. <laughs> that's it. That's enough. Stop it. They've done more push-ups tonight than I've done all year. They've done more push-ups than I've done my whole life. I'm serious. You say that pretty confidently. <laughs> like, it's not even close. It's not even close. I can say it with confidence. Rosen Pierre getting up to big surprise there. The 33-yard line where the boxers will start. I think I might have done maybe maybe 50 pushes my whole life. Maybe. And that's pushing it. <laughs> I mean, you, you hung out with the great Sam Bath. Yes, I did. And he's done probably millions of millions. push-ups. Yeah, and I've, I've watched him do it. I've applauded him for that. And you escaped. You yeah, didn't have to do any. Yeah. I was too busy winning awards. Well, Terry Jr. back to pass, and it's going to fall incomplete.
course, the great Sam Bath. A veteran. I want to say he was in the National Guard? Yes, he was. He might still be in active duty. Family of veterans. Family of veterans, yeah. Of course, his father, Richard Bath, I believe. Army? Something like that. I want to say he was Army. Take your word for it. You want to you want to go to a Harvard Yale game? I want to go to an Army Navy game. Yes, that would be awesome. No, that would, that would definitely be cool. This is a bucket list. As Montero escapes a hit, quick toss in, a flag thrown after the play. Number twenty-three on the reception, Shannon Thomas. You got bodied, the chant from the 1500 BC High fans in attendance. I'll tell you what, it's one hell of a crowd here. Personal foul against the BC High Eagles, roughing the passer is the call. So a free 15 and first down for the boxers. Fifteen yards from the end of the pass. That's huge right there. They need that in the worst way. Yeah, this, this is a certain bucket list for football fans, not even just college football, football fans in general. Montero Jr. back to pass now, stepping up, looking over the middle. He's got his man in the falling incomplete oh, for Carpio again. Probably the fifth drop pass of the night and for I'm Carpio. Sure. I thought he passed by the line of scrimmage, too. It was close. But, I mean, listen, Box have had their, their share of opportunities here. Um, he should have caught that football. I think it was just deflected, just a hair, but that should be a football you should catch. So my, my top five bucket list, Army, Navy. I'll throw in Harvard, Yale on the list. This is in no particular order. Right. Michigan versus State. Absolutely. A&M versus Texas. Yeah, okay. And Alabama versus Auburn. Montero Jr. in trouble again, and he's going to take the sack for a two-yard loss. And you're forgetting one in, in, national, in the National Football League. You're forgetting that. In the National Football League. Yep, the place you got to go if you're a football fan. Let me let me guess. I think you're going to say Jerry World. No, you got to go to um, Lambeau Field. Lambeau, Packers Bears. It's got to be Packers you Bears. You got to go. I mean, unless they're both good teams, though, that's not that's not in my top five. It's in my top ten. No, really, I mean, it's Lambeau, not in my top five. Lambeau Field is one of those places you got to go. You gotta go, Lambo. Bring like four, four jackets, three sweatshirts. Montero. Oh, what a catch! Oh, he dropped it. And off the end of the hands of Paul Mitchell. Right there, Matt. They're right there. I mean, they're just they're they're toying with the defensive backs of BC High. Um, Fourth and twelve. I think you gotta go, go for, for it. You got nothing to lose here. Third quarter. Oh, come on, guys. You gotta go for this one. I mean, you're down. What do you got to lose? You're down twenty-three points. End of the third quarter. You, you, you gotta go for it. You gotta take a shot to the end zone. High end over end punt. Falling at the 21 and taken down at the 31 is the BC High return man, number 18, Jacob Perez. With seven seconds left in the third quarter, we'll have another look at Will Bowen and Danny Abraham. And if you're the boxers, as you mentioned, Newbie, they're right there. The receivers are toying with the defensive Absolutely. backs of the Eagles. Do you send an extra protection on the line to buy Montero some time? No, they just got to catch the football. I mean, it comes down to this dropping the football or the snack being accurate. I, I think it's plenty of time. 
Um, it, it's just a matter of just developing that chemistry and catching the football. That was a muff snap right there for a loss. And that'll, that'll be a third quarter. Bowen recovering for the Eagles. And the third quarter has come to an end. The score 35 to 12. The BC High Eagles leading over the Brockton Boxers. But all told, it's been a fairly close game. The score definitely doesn't tell the tale. And the Brockton receivers just not caught the balls, but the plays have been there. Right, but I mean, again, this is what separates the number 14 in the state from the Brockton Boxers. Is, you know, BC's not doing that. They're not making those mistakes. You know, those little things right there is what separates you know, teams that you know are, are dominant, teams that are not. Brockton Boxers have the ability to be dominant, just, you know, I, I, I think this the chemistry is not there, but hey, you know, this is the fourth game of the season, so it's a seven game season. You know, we, we gotta start turning the corner. We gotta start turning the corner. End of the third quarter, we wanna take this opportunity to thank our cameraman for tonight's festivities. The one, the only, Mike, the postman Simmons. Another delivery? Another delivery to the viewers of Brockton traveling up to Cambridge. Walked here, I heard. So our, with the equipment, walked here. Our lowly selves only went to a community college. It's the smartest I've ever felt being on the campus hey, listen, of Hoffman. Don't ever be ashamed of your education, man. Listen, I, I, I know people who went to Madison who are doing circles around people who went to Emerson College. Circles. I know people who went to Bridgewater State who are doing circles around people who went to uh, Syracuse. An example, that is me. <laughs> Low pass gonna fall incomplete. But seriously though, I don't you know, just to viewers out there, no matter where you come from, no matter what school you are, that's why your work ethic. Whether it's Harvard, whether it's Massasoit, whether it's Bridgewater State, Curry College, or Brown, or what have you. You know, if your work ethic's not there, then do car free, it really doesn't matter. You mentioned Curry College. Quick quick funny story. Massive accident in ninety three on the way up here. GPS said, get off Route 28 in Milton. Drove past Milton Academy, came across Curry. Had a little conversation about seven-time award-winning director and producer Newbie Rattel. About how you went to Curry, transferred to Bridgewater, nominated for an Emmy. That's where legend began, Bridgewater State. He just gets gobbled up. Oh, man, it's not even Thanksgiving yet. Bone brought down behind the line, so that's a big stop. That'll bring up a fourth and 14 for the, the defense has been pretty solid here. I mean, you know, for the most part, look at the defense has been up there a lot, so they got to be exhausted too. The defense would have brought the box, they have to be long sustained drives. You need a big return here from LRB Cundiff. Yeah. And he's not going to take the opportunity as it takes a Brockton bounce at the 48. And that's where it's touched down. Just inside the boxer's end of the field. So first and 10, Brockton at the 48-yard line. When you talk about atmosphere. For an old stadium, this place gets loud. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think, I mean, it's, it's kind of a, you know... The acoustics of the place. Yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about yet. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. Sure. When you talk about acoustics, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, more that's Berkeley's a, thing. Yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm not even doing that. Yeah, it's loud. I agree. <laughs> Montero Jr. back to pass. And Nellerby Cundiff hearing footsteps. And feeling footsteps <laughs> as he was about to get trucked by Caleb Moody. Montero well, Jr. adjusting his brace on his left knee before running back to the huddle. 
I mean, at this point, I'm almost putting in Thomas O'Brien. We'll see. There's O'Brien playing all of last year, or most of last year, in place of Matthew Crusoe, who got injured. And the first couple of games before they put Crusoe in a quarterback. Now Montero Jr. looking long and deep, and if that's not intentional grounding, I don't know what is. Well, no, he was out of the pocket. It definitely wasn't intentional grounding. He was way out the pocket. I thought he was on the line. That ball was lined up on the far hash. I mean, I, I think the issue, the, I mean, it, it, it's there. I mean, he had you know, the tie. He just he completely airmailed that one. I mean, in terms of the, uh, in terms of, of Montero and the receivers, it's there. The plays are there. You know, you make one or two plays, it changes the whole atmosphere of the game. So I'm not sure if necessarily, you know, he, you know, is he? He's not playing bad. It's just, it just the receivers and the quarterback just not on the same page. I mean, that's just what it comes down to. Give to Rosenpier, and he's not going to get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of one. And that'll bring up a fourth and 11. Think you're going to go for it here. Brogdon's offense is still on the field. And a timeout called by head coach Peter Colombo. Nine twenty-seven left in the fourth quarter. Newby, do you see a little comeback in the win for the boxers? No, I don't. I don't see a comeback. I think um, I think BC's played a, a fantastic game. They've been solid. Um, I, I think Brockton, the defense has been there, but I think, number one, the defense is tired. They've been on the field a lot uh, here in the second half. And like I said before in the beginning of the game, for the Brockton boxers to win this game, it needs to be a shootout. And it's been a shootout on BC's end, but Brockton's not coming back, uh, you know, putting 35 points on the board. I thought that was going to win, you know, Brockton could really win this game with the offensive powerhouse. And, I'm, I'm, and, and for the life of me, I don't know why they're punting the football. I have no idea why they're playing the football right now. It's 35 to 12. It's nine minutes left. What the heck do you got to lose? High end over and kick falling at the 15 botched. And Brockton almost had a chance to recover that, but it's down at the six. Yeah, that would be huge for them, but I, 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 I don't get I don't know why you're punting. I, I, I don't know. I agree. Yes. So looking ahead, the Catholic Conference swing comes to an end next week as the BCA Traveling Road Show finds itself in Westwood at Severian Brothers yeah, High School another, in the Hawk Bowl. That's another tough one right there. Severian, the losers of three games in the last four years. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're playing down there. I mean, in Severian, great atmosphere. Um, I haven't checked their rankings, but they got to be up there in terms of the rankings. Newbie Research will be on that pretty soon and figure out what's going on. You talk about perennial powerhouses. It's Catholic Memorial. It's BC High. It's Severian. Abraham brought down behind the line. It will be a second and 12 from the four. Of course, Malden Catholic, Arlington Catholic, both up there. Everett, Mansfield, Marshfield, they're always up there. Four receivers set. The give to DeMeo. Who spins off the hit. Still on his feet to the 20. He's got a man to beat. Now he's got nothing but wide open grass in front of him. The 50, the 40, the 30. 
the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, and the end zone. Bobby DeMeo, a 96, that's right, I said 96 yard run to give the Eagles yet another touchdown. I'll tell you what, they got two disappointed groups right here, the Brock and Boston fans and the cheerleaders. They are not happy right now. More push-ups for them. All right, we're going to officially see whether they just do seven to add on to the touchdown or whether they're actually going to do 42 push-ups if they do. May God have mercy on their souls. Yeah. <laughs> That'll bring their total up to 147 on the night. Extra point is up and good. 42 to 12, a 30-point edge for the BC High Eagles. No movement by the cheerleaders yet. Yeah, so this uh, a dominating effort right here by, by the boxers. Excuse me, by BCI. I wish I could tell the boxers. That would have been the upset of the century. Brockton comes in here and upsets BC. Not necessarily. I really don't think so. Have you talked fourth ranked in the state? I, I think I think Brockton has the ability and has the talent to beat any team in the state on any given Sunday, Friday, or Saturday. You know, I, I, I really think so. You know, like I said before, one or two plays could turn over the whole game. You can't just start something and not see it through to the end. Looks as though the BC High cheerleaders are not going to do push-ups for this, for this touchdown. And they've actually disappeared into the tunnel. <laughs> Rosen Pierre taking it off the arms of Ellerby Cundiff and now trying to spin his way but Taken down at the 32. So, another decent start. I mean, Severian this year, they're struggling themselves there. I mean, with their rate number 11 in the state. Struggle. So, I mean, they're one and two. And we'll see how they do tonight. If so, you're saying there's a chance. I Listen, uh, you know, you can call me crazy, but I think the Bronto Boxers can be any team in the state. Newby? They have the talent to be any team in the state. It's just a matter of playing well. Newby? You're crazy. Yeah, listen. Listen. They called me crazy when, when, when they said I wasn't going to be, you know, was, I wasn't going to be nominated for an Emmy Award. They called me crazy then. You know? So, let's get crazy. Quarterback keeper, Montero, working his way to the far side. He's going to be hit after a gain of three. I think you saved the legs. I think you put in Thomas O'Brien. Save what legs? He's, Montero, seven, he's 17 still, years old. He's got. He's fine. He's coming off. Play him. A torn ACL. Yeah, you play him. Two okay. torn ACLs. Yeah, he's, he's 17 years old. You play him. He has plenty of energy. Play and, him. What do you know? Hey, the boxers you, just sent in Thomas yeah, O'Brien. You, you know what? No, you know, listen, okay? Listen. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> O'Brien back to pass. He gets clocked. Is there a third quarterback on the <laughs> roster? <laughs> Michael Norman Jr. <laughs> And Matt Norman, a sophomore. O'Brien, known more for his arm strength and his passing accuracy than the dual threat that Jose Montero Jr. is. Trips to the near side. O'Brien in the shotgun. They give to Pierre. I mean, he's got a gain of about 
three. And that'll bring up about a fourth and about four. They'll probably keep the clock running because of the score they typically do that. We'll see if they stop the clock. I doubt it. They'll probably keep the clock running. Because uh, just the score discrepancy. The clock would continue running anyway as Cundiff did not get out of bounds. Yes. Yes. I agree. I'm saying going forward, they probably will keep the clock running. As the 6.30 left in the game. Trips to the near side. It is Mitchell Carpio. And now back to pass looking over the middle and complete to Jalen Ellerby Cundiff. Nice bullet pass right there. Rather, number 93 on the reception. Tim Okenlola, senior defensive lineman. First and ten for the boxers. Trips to the near side. O'Brien in the shotgun. Hurry up offense. Flank is left by Rosenpierre. Now back to pass looking long towards the near sideline and throwing it out of bounds. Intended for Carpio. <laughs> Man is playing Kanye West, all the likes. And, and I, I want to say this, and I say this, and I will challenge anyone to disagree with me. They are the best band, high school band in the world. I in agree. the country, they're the best I high agree. school band in the world. Right here, brought to Massachusetts. Same formation, O'Brien in the shotgun, Brockton jumping. It's going to be a false start against the boxers. Can't, I mean, LRB listen, Cundiff, you're, the you're offending a, boxer. You're a receiver. There's no reason you should get an off, offside. You just got to wait till the ball snapped. I mean, you can't even hear the count. Can't do it as a receiver. Five fifty-one to go in the fourth quarter in... What has turned into a route, 42 to 12, a 30 point lead for the BC High Eagles. Thomas O'Brien Jr. replacing Jose Montero. Four receiver set, Rosen Pierre, the lone man, flanking O'Brien to his left. Now looking long, and Paul Mitchell's not going to be close to that one. About five yards overhead. Another play that had potential for the boxers. Doesn't get more pi picturesque than this is the lights of the Boston skyline. In clear view of Harvard Stadium. Uh -oh, O'Brien's gonna trouble. be pressured. Gets around the three or four BC High linemen and now tossing it just out of reach. Tough of throw number right 13, there. Martin Paul Carpio. Oh, that was a tough throw. But kudos to O'Brien who Got it off. Escaped the hit. Looked good. And how many times we said today just off the mark? I mean, just right there. Fourth and 15 for the boxers who are going to go for it here. Oh, so well, it's about <laughs> time. Oh. It should have been going for it since the third quarter. Four receivers set. O'Brien in the shotgun. Back to pass. 
Now rolling out to the near side. He's going to have complete to Jalen Ellerby Cundiff, who's got a first down. And about seven additional yards. Dependent on how O'Brien finishes this game, do you consider starting him against Severian? No. I think, um, like I said before, one or two plays, it's a different ball game. Um, and, you know, football is a game of inches. He looks good as a quarterback. I'll, I'll tell you what, he looks good. If he's he's got to come again to the 15. But I'll tell you this, if, if maybe he struggles, I'd have a shorter leash. I'll tell you that. I'd have a shorter leash. Um, and be quicker to make the change, but I, you, you, I, I think I start with Montero. First down for the boxers, who now have a first and ten at the 14-yard line. Don't call it a comeback. I won't. I would not call it a comeback. O'Brien back to pass, looking for the end zone. Oh, and pass interference. Where's the flag, for Christ's sake? He's working hard. Give him a flag. <laughs> Held him right by the horse collar. She's Louise. Second and ten for the boxers from the 14-yard line. Trips to the near side. O'Brien flanked by Rosen Pierre. Looking to the end zone and not even close. So the clock stops with 5.06 to go. Brian back to pass yet again. He's got number 23, Shannon Thomas. Good for a gain of about five. In other high school scores around the area, Lynn Classical. Up 21 nothing over Gloucester. I want to give a shout out to uh, my school, Lynn Tech. 3-0. They are a wagon this year. I think they're uh, they're poised to back inside. Zellerby Cundiff diving to the end zone. He's got a touchdown for the boxers. Good effort right there. Listen. And I like his energy right there. I like his fire. I like his fire. His rigor. His rigor. His fire. His work ethic. His intentional fortitude. I like it. He was stopped at the four-yard line, showing us the stretch. Stretch Armstrong for Jalen Ellery Cundiff. Um, hey, listen. Th th this right here shows a lot about the Roth and Boxes. In fight. In pride. In leadership. So the question has to be asked again. After that very successful drive led by Thomas O'Brien Jr., do you consider starting him at quarterback next week at Severian? Okay, let me be clear. No. I'm going to have a shorter leash, but no. Because we also have to consider that I don't think BC high starters are all in the game. Fair enough. So, I mean, hypothetical, Brockton miraculously scores three touchdowns in the next four minutes and 18 seconds. Okay, let me say this for the third time. No. Two-point conversion attempt is going to be off the hands of Rosen Pierre incomplete. 
Again, I would have a shorter leash next week if that was the case, but I'm starting Montero. How short do you go? Uh, first half. First half. We will have that game for you on Brockton Community Access. If you want to talk to us about the drubbing here at Harvard, hit us up on Twitter, at Brockton Channel, hashtag BCA Sports. Also, follow at Newbie Video. Yes. Get all the documentary updates. Protect, serve, and care our next documentary. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a really I'll good one. I'll some, get some inside knowledge. I won't spill anything. It's going to be... This is going to be the one to win the Emmy. Hopefully this is the one to win the Emmy. We've got a lot of big names on it. We're actually going to Baltimore in a few weeks. Talk to a few people. Uh, working closely with, uh, with Chief Gross. He's a big part of the documentary. Also, um, Lieutenant Lenahan has been very helpful with us. He's going to help us out on a few things. So brought the police shout out to them. Um, helping us out on, on the documentary as well. premiering September of 2018, or do you not have a date? No, the, the fall of 2018, fall. most likely it's November. We November. typically premiere our, our, most of our films every November, usually after the, uh, the election. Big plans for the premiere? Big plans. We, we got a location. Um, I'll announce it, actually. Location is going to be Dedham Showcase Cinema. So Cinema so, Deluxe? Yep, over there. Uh, legacy place in Dedham. When news breaks, BCA breaks it. New quarterback for the Eagles. It is number 16, Tom Grandin. We have seen the last of Danny Abraham for the night. I do want to give a shout out to uh, my high school, Lynn Tech. The Tigers. 3 0, just completely dominating. And I think they're, uh, they're poised to, to make a run in the playoffs. Brandon with the keeper, and that's going to be good for a first down for the Eagles. Spellman trailing St. Mary's 36 to 8. Now, what division is Spellman? Three. I believe uh, Lynn Tech is three. I'd love to see a Spellman Tech matchup. Oh, I'd love that. Wareham is taking it to Seekonk, 28 nothing. A lot of BC high on my timeline right now. This was a very anticipated matchup. Brighton leading over Dorchester, 20 to six. That is, oh, that's hello. a hit. That's a hit. We're little how do you do on Grandin? Oh wow, hello, how are you doing? Welcome to Harvard Stadium. Number 49 for the boxers. Number 43, rather, Trayvon Goodwin. Little how do you do? Little how do? You do? Welcome to the Ivy League. How did they do? January 28th, I believe, is going to be the date for Brighton's visit to Staff Gymnasium Absolutely. to face the Brockton Boxers men's basketball team. It's always a good matchup. Always a good matchup. That's, that's the duel of the coaches and the only game every year where Bob Bowen takes off the red sweater. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to give a shout out to, congratulations to Hugh. He actually um, is teaching at Bright High School now. He taught at another high school in Boston, but um, is now working in Brighton High School as long as coaching Brighton High School. So I think, um, you know, he deserves it. You know, former coach of the year, obviously won the state championship last year. Um, they're building a dynasty, and what's so special about that is that they're building a dynasty. And it's a public school. So many dynasties now are private schools and 
counts at schools and so forth, which is you know which is cool, but it, it's something a little more special. It's a public high school, and also I want to give a shout out to uh, my good friend in the Big Three, Brian Rudolph, who's now the head coach of the Bedford basketball. That was a pretty good matchup last year. In New Bedford, it's going to be a powerhouse. I'll tell you what, he's one hell of a recruiter. Um, he's well-respected in that community. So that New bedford Brockton rivalry will be back, and it will be back in full force. I think basketball as a whole in Massachusetts, in New England, is going to explode the next two or three yeah, years. Yes, it's definitely... Um, Stuff he picked up, I thought, it's picked up the last five years or so. A lot of athletes are uh, are really uh, coming back, I think, to the public school system. Brandon on the carry, knocked out of bounds. Clock continues to run with 30 seconds left. Yeah, that's the last play of the game, looks like. Notre Dame Academy cheerleaders getting one more shout out here as the clock will wind down to zero. Newbie, a thankful ending for the team that has to travel just north of an hour home. Uh, definitely an honor um, to call this game. Brockton, you know, they fought hard. This BC was a better team. Let's just be real. They're, they're the better team. I thought Brockton had an opportunity to make this game really interesting in the first few plays, you know, that they missed in the in the, uh, in the first quarter, I thought there was possible touchdowns missed. Hey, but, you know, this is why they play the game. This is why BC right now is better than Brockton. Um, and hopefully Brockton will be back. They'll be back, hopefully. Newbie, graduating seniors, the quarterback and the running back of BC High, Danny Abraham. Brockton have a shot against the Catholic Conference next year. We almost beat Catholic Memorial last week. We'll get a very interesting matchup against Severian. Brockton has a shot to win the Super Bowl every year. Every year they have a it's shot a to take. win the Super Bowl. It's a hot take. They should. There's 4,000 kids. They should have a shot to win a Super Bowl every single year. And I think they do. It's just a matter of staying focused and being disciplined. Newbie, what went wrong for the boxers tonight? I think everything went wrong. I thought special teams went wrong. I thought defense went wrong. Um, a lot went right, I thought, though. A lot went right. It's just... A matter of you, listen, football is one or two plays. One or two plays changes the momentum. That fourth and eight, I thought was huge. I thought that was the game right there. Fourth and eight, they went for it. They got the first down, ball game. I thought that was the play that changed the momentum of the game. 42 to 18, the final score. Newbie, your final thoughts. Hey, you know what? What a, what a great time to be here at Harvard. I mean, what an honor to come here just to sit back and just say, wow, we're here. Um, and for the Brockton Boxer players, you're on the Harvard field right now. This is not a dream. It's a reality. Okay? You could be playing at Harvard. You could be going to school in Harvard. This is a reality. Don't see it as a dream. See it as, see it as a goal. See it as a goal because dreams are things you can't touch. Goals are, are realities. Can't say it any better than that. Again, the final score, the BC High Eagles defeating the Brockton Boxers, 42-18. to 18. A very, very... Weird night here at Harvard University. A couple of big plays that should have been for the boxers that weren't converted. Again, 42 to 18, Eagles over the boxers. For everyone here at BCA Sports, our cameraman, Mike the Postman Simmons, my broadcast partner, the seven time award winning director and producer, and Emmy nominated newbie Rateau. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game. <laughs>